So, are you feeling like you've got a good enough grip? So we'll go one, two, three. Yep. And then under there. And then over that, which I left there. <laughs> and I've got chocks ready. That looks like an important task. It is. Today we're in the Victoria Room, which is one of our special spaces on, on campus and gets used for all sorts of functions. And we've had these Cora Allen works here um, as part of the launch of our new website and the 125 celebrations. They're now coming off the wall and coming into the gallery um, as part of the Aratoi Art Collection and Focus exhibition. A series this year, it'll be the second of um, two presentations in the gallery of uh, works which were purchased for the 125 celebrations. For this exhibition, we're focusing on Cora Allen's works, but also pulling out a really big um, Tongan Natu or tapa that was gifted to the university in 1999. And we're gonna use it to wrap the walls of the Lower Chartwell Gallery. Um, yeah. We're out in lower hut at a workshop where I'm setting up the big vitrine. I'm going to be setting up all the objects and making sure that everything's ready for the install. Yeah, make sure it all fits and I haven't done that wrong. Somebody asked me at one point like where was my ideal place to show this exhibition if I could choose. I honestly said to them I don't really have a particular place in mind, but what I care about is the people who occupy that space. And I'd only ever heard good things about everyone at the Adam, so I feel really excited about it. John's work, John Gearn's work's called um, Nervous But Excited. Yep. And I was like, that sums it up. <laughs> it's the one that almost falls apart if you bump it. Yeah. <laughs> what are you thinking, Andy? I'm thinking that if everyone was this thorough, <laughs> in preparation for an install, um, it would, yeah, it would be very useful. Take some of the fun out of it, but sometimes you can have a bit too much well, fun. Maybe I'll leave some problems to solve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, Let's just for you. Spin one at me. But no, I mean it's, it's big. It's pretty technical. It's very well designed, and I think yeah, if it gives us the reassurance that we need. Uh, mainly about the time frame. Um, it's been really, really useful, and um, yeah, you're nailing it by the looks of things. Yeah, what, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, journalist. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the daunting task of sorting this incredible office um, because we've got this idea of moving some of it into the Kirk Gallery for this back of house exhibition so that I can sort through and decide what belongs here as part of the Adam Art Gallery's archive and what I'll be taking home because after 17 years at the gallery I'm leaving and I'm going to start over and working in a different kind of way but I'm having to empty this space and um, sort it out. But I had this idea that maybe that would be of interest to people. Maybe it would be fun to sort through this long history I've had here and use the things that I've kept as prompts to tell some stories about what has happened here and the people that I've worked with and to, you know, add something to the back of house project along with the artist projects that we're presenting. So I'm literally putting things in boxes and moving them across the road into the gallery. The gallery was established uh, as a teaching and research resource, so we've always understood where we are. We're sited on campus, so we've always tried to put on exhibitions that are going to engage 
students and staff as well as the wider public but it's more than that it's having a commitment to revealing our processes showing how things are done making sure that we keep really good records involving students in the work to produce an exhibition making sure that they have the opportunity to reflect on it afterwards taking people on tours engaging them in what we do and maybe showing them things in a way that is not merely entertaining but challenging or enabling them to question or think a little bit differently or more deeply it's been an absolute privilege and a luxury to be able to work in that way and that's because we're on campus but we've always thought of art as a catalyst to generate discussions across disciplines so the public programs that we run we bring in people with other expertise to engage with the work use it as a kind of platform or uh, starting point for different kinds of conversations. Koi Allen is a Nguyen uh, Māori artist who is working with Hiapo and the kind of Nguyen traditions of bark cloth and patterning and she has been credited with reviving a kind of sleeping art form so the history of kind of uh, bark cloth, the paper mulberry bush uh, and tapa cloth that we, we get around the Pacific has a really fraught history because there were times when it was banned, the making of it, and also when cotton became available as part of a kind of wider colonial um, project to, um, to be using uh, these kind of European cloths. These works were made as part of the Makan House uh, residency that she did, where she started using colour and she started using uh, Fenua paint, uh, so making pigments from the earth. And there's this really rich history in New Zealand of, of pigments and um, how they were made. It actually can create this kind of map of New Zealand from where the pigments were traded from for different whānuis when they were being um, or Cairo when they were being painted. You can kind of trace where different pigments were being made and gotten from. So it's a there's a kind of fascinating history to it. So in these works, Cora Allen is actually looking at um, the tools of her making. So how does she actually produce these works? So some of them will. Um, feature eka, um, the tapa beaters that you actually uh, use to make um, the tapa. I've always thought it would be really cool to do a project where you had mounts, either like took them off display like existing mounts or made them and like brought them to artists and got them to make an object for the mount or like in response to. When anyone's making something, you offer it up to the thing to check if it's going to fit, and if it doesn't fit, you keep working on it, and you just go back and forth, and you keep offering it up until until the thing fits. And my favourite thing about the term, it's kind of like a gesture, like you're offering something, and it can be like feels kind of gentle, but then at the same time, it works both ways. You use the phrase interchangeably whether you're offering up the object to the mount or the mount to the object, because that's what this is effectively is like um, the interaction with the artists. Is it's kind of like. Like you're, you're reversing things or like the process isn't like linear, you're kind of, you're just trying to meet in the middle somewhere. For me that part of the process is like entirely what mount making is. Just trying to make something that's going to fit as an echo to that other, that other thing. I kind of figure that what I want to say through this project is that it feels like practical work, but it's a, it's a very important means to produce new knowledge. We make things and we record what we've made and we learn through that process and it's important to remember what it is that we've learned, whether it's knowledge of an artist's practice, better understanding of how to hang a show, what kinds of relationships are required to actually make things happen. Um, running a program, looking after a gallery, looking after a collection, these are things that you don't walk into with no experience and no understanding. You've got to learn 
and that learning never stops. So that's kind of what I want to say through this project, I think. But we'll see. And a really important thing is that I'm involving Sally McMath, our intern, and Dee Heheworth, who is a MA student. So two very young people who I'm really hoping that they'll fossick through my stuff, find things that interest them, because they are the next generation. And so I also feel that there's that opportunity to sort of pass on the knowledge and involve them and maybe get them uh, telling me stuff because there's always, as I've said, as I say, there's always room to sort of grow and develop. You never stop learning. And I think they'll have things to teach me about, I don't know, how I can digitize my papers rather than have them in boxes. You know, maybe there's a way of actually holding on to the stuff without actually having it filling up half my house. <laughs> there must be a better way. <laughs> Any other concerns, considerations about this, putting the show together? Um, yeah, huge concerns um, around, you know, not being, like, what's my role in all of this? I'm just the curator collection, so I end up caring for these, these works. So you need to kind of understand them and what the, uh, why they've been made and kind of present them in their best light. Oops, doing a terrible job of wrapping here. <laughs> it's not going far. Um, and the other work that we're putting on display, this Natu, it's always been listed in our databases by an unknown village collective. And we don't really have that much information about it. We know it was gifted, we know when it was gifted, but um, there's so much more that you could actually find out. And so I'm hoping through the course of the exhibition and through putting the work on display, it's um, always been on a roll uh, in the back of the gallery um, since I've worked here. And um, I think Andy vaguely remembers taking it down in 2008 before he started kind of um, into his role as it is now. And so it's a little bit nerve wracking because you're putting something on display that is also about your lack of record keeping in that area or, um, you know, there's, there's a kind of research element to it and also a, a lack of information and it shows how quickly you can lose information even about um, something which I assumed was made in 1998 but um, as I've kind of continued to research it, potentially it wasn't made in 1998, it could be, could be very old, we don't know. Um, so I don't know when it was made and I don't know who made it. Yeah. Uh, and I think that kind of speaks as well to the, you know, the loss of tradition with Cora Allen's work. Um, while Tongan Natu is in a very different kind of camp and it's quite wide, widely practiced and still continues to be made um, and traded today you kind of think about, well, yeah, just how quickly things can be lost if the, the information isn't passed along. Um, and sometimes, you know, that information won't be able to be passed along for, um, you know, maybe it's not appropriate for me to know that. Maybe I'm not um, the right person. Um, yeah. This is what we would normally call Wacky Wednesday because normally nothing happens. We work really hard all day on Wacky Wednesday and you get to the end of the day and you go, what, what on earth did we do today? But we had scheduled this to be the start of Wendy's Hang. Uh, it's probably the earliest I've had um, an artist in and a space prepared and ready to go for a hand. But it was the one that we needed to get the jump on. Um, Wendy had an amazing layout document already prepared, so it should be good. In the course of over a decade, I was, part of the process was evaluating 
my back catalogue of drawings and deciding to keep them or discard them. So I was going through quite a heavy, heavy kind of critiquing process. And the ones that I wanted to reclaim um, got wrapped, they got considered very carefully and then wrapped in fresh archival tissue and they were um, allocated a new archive box. And um, those archive boxes became the basis for me to it's a selection of work that I've been making um, across the last decade. It's a small selection, really, of, of um, the, the larger body of work. And it began as, a, um, as a, an attempt to do justice to my back catalogue of drawings, which I had stored in my studio. And I um, began the work utilising them and using them as a kind of a... a a diving board really for making me work. By the time the work's hung, um, the sh all the show's hung, there'll be quite a kind of, uh, a process will become quite apparent that it began with um, me making images of drawings wrapped in tissue. And around about that, as I was making those works, I became really fascinated with the kind of surfaces and materials that works of art rub up against in the course of their existence. There's seven full working days to go. Seven and a half. Yeah. And personally working the middle weekend isn't an option on this one. Without some jiggery pokery. Sometimes you're just hanging rectangles and that's that's cool too. Then, but then, yeah, then every now and again there's something where it's like, hey, I want to hang this 24 metre long, 4.5 metre wide Natu cloth on the wall. How, how do you think we could do that? And you go, yeah, how can we do that? I think I sent Sophie a text message, at, a team's message at 10 to 2 on Friday morning saying, hey, what about... Yeah. We'd never, I've never done anything like this, this, but then the actual operation of rolling out that cloth, you know, some people just want to like go, oh, we'll just, we'll just start and we'll see what happens, and, and I'm into that too, I, I can be cavalier, but there's also a thing of like, how do we not waste heaps of time prepping to do something we've never done before, but still make what we end up doing the best attempt that we have at doing it once. You know what I mean? So what we came up with, Sophie was, she goes, oh, what about a lazy Susie bearing on top of the dolly trolley? And I'm like, yeah, let's do that. And then I was like, oh, what about if we put an L bracket on the top? And then that way we can, we've got something better to hang on to and we can screw it to the wall if we get, if we get into a pickle. And then, so yeah, you spend all this time going, what about this? What about if we try that? What about this? Is that going to work? Is this better than that? I don't know, da da da. And, then, you, and then, you, then there's a time when you go, okay, I think this is a great idea. We'll go with it. And it took us an hour and 45 minutes to put it up. You know, felt confident about the clamps. Kept, we ran a laser line up so that we could have some kind of, are uh, we need to go up a bit or down a bit? And there was a little bit of finessing of, of it um, on Monday morning. But yeah, other, otherwise it, it, it went up in one go. But like the actual, Installation is preceded by you know weeks and months of worrying, pondering, um, scheming. I joked with someone recently. Oh well, you know if this had been to Papa or someone else, they would have had this cloth out months ago, and they would have been doing tests, and they would have tested the clamps, and that they'd, they'd know the the Newtonian carrying of per thing, and they would have weighed it, and they'd know exactly how to do it. And I was just like, well, and then on the day of, we actually get it out. Or no, the night before we got it out. And you know, and that's like, there was a moment where I was getting out going, maybe we could have got this out sooner. And then the answer was, where would we have laid it out? Because it's just too long and too big. And it's really easy to like go, nah, it's too hard. And for ages I just used to say yes, and then work it out. And sometimes now I go, ooh, I'm not sure. We'll, but we'll work, it, we'll work it out, we'll see if we can do it. Today's just been getting everything here. Um, 
because we've had things out in Marker, I've had things out in Kelson, and then things in Newtown, so accumulating it all in the same spot and trying, hoping that the truck can get down driveways and yeah. But it's here all here now. In the safe, safe cocoon of the gallery. And then Sophie's laying out Cora Allen's area, mm -hmm. in which case we could start hanging those components. Camus is in your space painting out that wall mm -hmm. um, and you know, some boxes are there. But I'm just trying to yeah, prioritise when to, I can actually make a start on that right. proper. Right. Um, as far as because the shelves got that far. Yes. Boxes are in this space. Um, I kind of want Sally to have some input as well. The space is going to be occupied by myself and Tina and a master student called Dee and Anne, and we're populating it with the contents of Tina's office. So 17 years worth of saved material and um, research that kind of has informed her time here. And we're going to work in here and filter through the content and kind of unearth what kind of informed Tina's time here, as well as um, kind of extended histories of New Zealand art and curation. Yeah. Um, yesterday we built the vitrine. Started off with the frame, put all the glass on, baseboards in, top in, got the power going. Um, and then this morning has been mostly preparing for object install. Uh, well, I've been documenting everything with Polaroids for ages. Um, but uh, I've been saving the joy of kind of discovering them developed by like posting them through this little hole. And then at the end of the day, I open it and work out, remember that I took all these photos. Um, that, one? that was yesterday, we just got the monitor in. That's um, us having first install a Smoko together. Oh, um, I was all there for that one. Uh, that was Craig, Freeborn and Andy, and he gave me some of his um, fruit toast with peanut butter on it and it was delicious. Um, yeah, that's us back the other workshop. That's Ollie and that's George and Simon. There's Tui. That's the frame yesterday. Mm -hmm. This drawer will be open. Oh. I just have to, got, I've got a store to put my angle grinder in there but I'm still using it. They're in that blurred space between being sacred object and still living their life with me. <laughs> I used to have um, we were trying to job where I was spending a lot of time in the actual big museum cases and cleaning the inside and people would be on the outside cleaning the outside and I started having dreams about it like I was going into like zoos that had gorillas inside cleaning the glass and then people on the outside cleaning the glass of like their enclosures <laughs> so that might have been spending a little bit too much time inside inside the trains I was a student here, yeah. I studied art history here in between 2016 and 2019. Yeah, so Tina was actually one of my lecturers in um, Roger Blakely's class in like first year or something. I suppose you could see the exhibition as this kind of durational project in which um, the resources will move out of these boxes, filter across a big workspace in the middle, and then these shelves will represent the different repositories where the research will be deposited. So, yeah, by the end of the exhibition, these shelves will be full and there'll be no brown boxes anymore. It's going to transition time to be with Adam, I suppose. Um, but Tina and I will be working in here together right until she leaves, so I suppose I'll get the last laugh. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it'll be good. Oh my god, a process the time sheet, the paper time sheet. That's my most immediate task, I think. Pain our people. I think it feels quite exciting. We've got a lot more people involved this time. A little bit more happening. 
And it's Tina's last, yeah, opening. It's, everything it's feels like easy. Tina's last everything right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, a little bit more going on than, than usual. Check the vinyl. This yeah. is <laughs> this is coming up in our install, so mm -hmm. that's related to our interior signage process. Um, you know, we all we're a small team, but all of us need to check the vinyl <laughs> because it's inevitable there's a typo in there somewhere. When the signage goes up, it's like uh, everything kind of clicks into, into place. Sometimes artists don't want all of that stuff on the walls. So we often accompany um, exhibitions with uh, a printed exhibition guide which keeps the words off the walls. But we always do have these introductory um, panels that are the way in. And I always feel that when they're up, and the lighting's done, and the mess is cleared away, suddenly something just clicks. And that's the show. It's not just the work. It's the whole complex, the whole network, which is the building, the lighting, the words, and the work. I love it once speeches are over at the opening. Once I've performed my duty, I can relax and enjoy the company, but I spend a lot of time at the beginning of an opening worrying, worrying about people's reactions, worrying about the safety of the works as people walk around with glasses in their hands, worrying about what I'm going to say, worrying uh, that the artists are happy. Uh, and then somehow, about halfway through after the speeches, I then just relax and join in the usually happy occasion. Um, Dear diary, it's Wednesday the 13th. It's the Wednesday before Friday opening. I second guess myself a little bit. I, I woke up this morning texting Sophia a lot about her curtain and because because we both of us weren't standing in the space with the curtain and where we were intending to hang it from. Suddenly, where we intend to hang it from is frail and the thing we want to hang is insanely heavy. And then we get here and of course it's not quite like that. So it's, yeah, it's just keeping a grounded reality check constantly at this stage. It's quite a stressful time. Like this is the stressful time where you're sort of thinking, you know you're gonna, you know you're gonna make it, but how well are you gonna make it by, and to what degree can you meet everyone's expectations? So, things like you know, very very finickety lighting decisions. You can do lighting forever. There is no end to, to doing lighting. There is never, you're never gonna, it's never gonna be perfect. And then there's things like, oh, now that we've lit this room beautifully, perhaps we should paint those skirting boards that haven't been painted for ten years. It's things like that start to come up, and you, and I genuinely think I hope I have time to address that, but. So often I don't, and I've put a certain amount of pressure on myself with this install, because it, being teen as last, I, I just want it to be really good, as best it can be, you know? I certainly don't want to fuck it up. We collectively put the high expectations on, and then there's a certain game of, you know, what, can, what is really achievable, who needs to let go of their high expectation? Sometimes, you know, it could be any of us. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I really want to do that thing. And I just know I sometimes get to the point where I'm like, no, I'm not going to get to that thing. So I do prioritise, you know, the curatorial vision I prioritise. Um, and then there's some of my own, like, things that I, I think, oh yeah, if I can get to that. And then, uh, and then under that is also a thing of like, what can we get away with? Re re like seriously, what can we get away with? Um, and that's a, quite a fun game to play with installers as well. Where you know that there's something actually that people would love if they find out that it's not been done. Uh, 
Bagongawahin uh, here University, Fra Academica, Pamoy Fra also Kubreta, his social policy. I have Nina Efrafe in my own here. Kakaim not to run out here at Kelly Goini, Go Unga, Go Tonga, Hauke, Lava Mai of Fahasio, Kinga to Goini, I have now hung out for two Goini going out here, Fahno Mamatai, going to be Malo. So when I see this, I, you know, I see home. You know, it reminds me when I grew up as a kid back home because I didn't migrate here until when I started tertiary education. Um, seeing like the designs in that, I don't know exactly because there are different designs here. That's not just one, but I can see home through the designs. It reminds me of of um, generations. You know, three or four generations before me because you know this was very important to them and each household and I mean each household used to have a tapa one of these links you know the launima they used to have fine mats and hard woven mats so those were the treasures that you you know because mm -hmm. there was money was only for those who were earning working for government agencies but most of our people were just at home looking after the kids for mothers and that and this is, was quite a privilege to have treasures like this in your household you know at home um, yeah that's what I see in here a lot of my culture I'm very proud very proud but I you know I'm quite happy to see that this is very uh, authentic. You hardly see any ngato like this, and even the width of it, uh, probably mm -hmm. the original measurement of what a launima should look like, mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, in the uh, depth, in the width and the length of it. Uh, very exciting to see one of these um, still around, and you can tell how the dye is fading probably tell at the age, which we don't know for yeah, sure. Know <laughs> um, I guess probably in the 1980s or... That's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you hardly see any of this real ngato, I call it ngato ngato, it's the real mm. authentic one. Um, and it's really hard to make and it's quite expensive to buy. Mm. Mm -hmm. So to be gifted one of these is a, a privilege mm. and it's an honour. But I, I do acknowledge mm. the calorie for choosing the tapa, the launima, and put it up fantastically, because this is quite heavy to put up. So I was <laughs> keen to know how on earth did you manage to put up a launima without part of it falling off or the middle of it falling off, because it has to be, you know, quite mm. attached to the wall or something without damaging it. It was a sleepless night for Andy beforehand. Not even quarter past five. Oh, it is twenty past five. I've got to go and get my speech. Shout out to the extended Adam Art Gallery team. And to all of our friends, family and colleagues, thank you all for being here on this crisp winter's evening. I'm immensely proud of how Te Patakatoi Adam Art Gallery looks this evening with its thoughtfully put together array of exhibitions. But for me, this is a bittersweet occasion. This is my last opening speech I'll give as director of the gallery, as I'm leaving next month after 17 years at the helm. It'll be a wrench to leave this place, but I know it's time to go. I've loved every moment 
of my time here. Well, almost every moment, but let's say every moment. And I will treasure the memories of the exhibitions we've made together, the collection we have nurtured and built, the events we've staged, the books we've made, the words we've written, the tours taken, classes given. I can't help but feel that back of house is a wonderful note to leave on. In a sense, it shows you what we do by granting greater visibility to all the work that usually remains unseen. This is the perfect opportunity to acknowledge everyone who has helped deliver these projects. You'll see on the main signage upstairs that unusually, we've listed absolutely everyone who has helped on this occasion. We may not quite be a cast of thousands, but there are many hands and eyes and minds. For me, this is a reminder of just what goes into making exhibitions, but it's also a clear indication of what a considered sense of purpose and intellectual mission adds to our venture. So without more ado, I shall say adieu. Enjoy the shows. Thank you all for your support. I look forward in the near future to be standing where you are, listening to a new director taking the gallery into the next decades. Thank you.